Okay, 50 and 50. Thanks to Netflix for the support. Uh, this is take four. Children coming in, missing, missing up lines. So this is take four. And I'm going to cover Neospora today. Neospora abortion. Um, so I suppose if I look at Neospora, it's significant uh, abortive agent. It's the parasite um, that we see in cattle. And if you look at in Irish labs, the levels of well, what percentage of abortions are associated with Neospora. In, in the cases where we find uh, abortive agents, Neospora has come up in about 10% of cases, which is quite high. One of the challenges for uh, this disease is once an animal or cat cows are infected, they're infected for life, and they'll pass that Neospora to their, their dams or to their fetuses, and the cycle continues. So, you know, if you think about Neospora, and apologies for my artwork, if you think about Neospora, if you have a positive cow uh, has been infected, she will have, one of the symptoms is abortion, and uh, if you think about her over her lifetime, she's continuously positive. So if she's four or five calves, she won't abort in every calf, but she can have healthy calves born as well. And those healthy calves will go on to be positive again. So it goes through generations, uh, and that's how the main spread occurs. And I, okay, so she might have, year two, she might have a normal calf, but that calf would be normal if it's uh, 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 positive for Neospora, but look normal and healthy. And that's how Neospora often spreads in our, in our herds. If we think about life cycles, again, my artwork is getting worse, but the dog plays a key role as the host for the spread of this uh, parasite. So what happens is if you have a positive cow, um, her fetal fluids, placenta or fetus, if the dog eats any of that, particularly the placenta is one that the do your, your dog will go after in the farm, um, that dog becomes infected and will pass out oocysts in, in the feces um, and will continue that cycle again. Uh, now, by the time you see abortion uh, on your farm, if it's the farm dog, they'll have become negative. Young dogs are more exposed, more prone to it. Foxes have been linked in, and some research is pointing to foxes being involved as well. The dog is a key risk because it plays as a host in the cycle. So if we think about the life cycle spread, the dog certainly continues that cycle on the farm or increases the risk if they're even exposed to the placenta, fetus or fetal fluids. But most spread, 90% of the spread occurs through generations on farm then where the dam passes the Neospora to her fetus, either causing abortion or have normal fetuses born, which when they become replacements can continue the cycle. So it's a complicated disease in, uh, from that perspective. And so what do you see with Neospora on farm? I think there's two classic examples based really around this life cycle uh, and the spread of disease. We can see abortion storms where we see large numbers of abortions occurring on the farm. And this is typically where an infected, uh, the oocysts in an infected dog um, feces becomes uh, cattle ingested. So some of the examples uh, I saw an out block on a farm where the greyhounds have been walking, heifers, a huge number of them aborted. Again, where if dog feces get into maybe a mixer wagon where you have a large spread across a herd that's naive. And an interesting case I heard of was where uh, grass clippings from a lawn were fed to dog, were, were fed to cattle where dog feces was on and a huge abortion storm. So it's something to remember if you're if you're taking ground, if you're um, and it's a challenge for farms as well with people walking their dogs on farms, you know, this is a risk for them. What what much what much more likely is, is you see that in about ten percent of cases or less, what much more likely is a kind of a chronic low grade abortion um, uh, level of abortions in a farm moving through the herd more slowly. So you know if you had a hundred cows you might have three or four abortions and again uh, there'll be animals there that will become positive that won't abort but they're, they, those calves when they're born continue the cycle because they're continuously positive. So I suppose there's two elements in the it can be slow burner but still causing significant losses to where we see in the extreme abortion storms. Okay, so what do we see with Neospora on farm? I suppose typically abortions, lost fetuses between five to six, seven months is, is typical. Sometimes you'll see cows repeating at two to three months after service where we won't see a fetus that could be linked to it. Again, there's other causes. Calves can be born healthy. Um, calves very rarely can be born with neurological signs related to the Neospora infection. That can be in coordination, lack of balance. There's a number of things there. But ultimately, what you'll see is you'll, you'll see uh, through the generations, if it's a slower spread, is that these positive animals are born into the herd and the cycle continues. So when we're talking about Neospora, like a lot of diseases, I, I talk about making a diagnosis to make a difference, but it really is important. And when we have any abortions, of course, we must go to look and see what's causing the abortions using bloods, any fetal material we can get to the lab, 
you know, if you look at routine screening, then we can use bloods or milk. And what we're always checking for in these, and a lot of times when people will be hearing about antibodies uh, because of coronavirus, is the antibodies are the immune response to the, the our exposure to the pathogen. Um, so we're looking for antibodies in blood tests and milk and on control programs. And there is some challenges, like every no test is perfect. Neospora, um, when we're looking for antibody levels, it can be dependent on the reproductive cycle, the stage of the reproductive cycle. Uh, a time for it when you're controlling Neospora and looking at the optimal timing for uh, testing, it's uh, in the last eight to four weeks before calving, uh, where the antibody levels are highest. So, but a diagnosis is really important. That allows us to okay understand we have Neospora in our herd; it has caused abortion, and then we look at how we can control it down here. But really, I suppose if we think about control first of all, think about prevention. Um, for for any herd, if you're closed, meaning you're not buying in stock, and that's really uh, you know closed herd, there's no stock coming into the farm. We're reducing the risk down. But if we are buying in stock. Is Neospora something that you need to put on the table in relation to blood testing? And I suppose the challenge with this frustration, side frustration, will be that you know one negative blood test isn't your all clear that you might need to repeat that blood test when that animal, if it's a replacement animal, is coming up to calving to be sure uh, that you haven't bought in Neospora. But a big thing, obviously, when the, when the canine animal plays a key role as a host for the parasite, that we don't have faecal. Uh, dog feces contaminating feed and feed stores are secure and you know the farm dog you know very important that the farm dog isn't part of that cycle and uh, as I said if you do get abortion storms don't get rid of the farm dog because when at that stage when you see it the farm dog will be negative and um, again it's a challenge for for some farms with people walking their land should you putting up signs saying this is the risk for my cattle with your dog and um, you know just practice good principles, dogs and leads. And again, if you're buying in feed, to make sure that feed hasn't been contaminated. And it's a tricky one and, and difficult conversation sometimes to be having, but I think it's important. So I suppose, if you have Neospora abortion, this is a question in email, what, what is your plan? How do you control it? I think you have to go after it. You have to identify the positive animals, and that takes, a, uh, takes time. I, I worked on a farm where, where we went through it for, for, for four years, where we tested the whole herd, we identified positives. We went back the second year at that timing before calving again to check um, were those positive, still positive. It was, it was quite incredible to follow the Neospora down through the herd, and it absolutely followed that generational, um, I, I suppose, it followed the generational uh, path from, from dam to fetus right throughout. And again, what you do, again, if your levels in Neospora are small, then you're looking at culling because those animals are going to cause problems potentially. If your Neospora levels are higher, you want to make sure that you're not breeding replacements from those animals, that you know that those animals can calve down on your farm, but no replacements occur. And it requires planning with your vet, looking at what is the best course of action, what level of Neospora is there. But I think the key thing for Neospora is understanding that they're infected for life. We need to go after them. We need to identify the positive carriers. The test isn't perfect. It does take time and patience to work through it, but have a plan. And avoiding abortion storms is really uh, avoiding this life cycle here and being very clear, clear on that. And if you don't have Neospora, always think like any disease, I don't want to bite in on farm. Okay, so that's it. Talk for today, today. Um, I'm doing a lot of reading at the moment, probably like a lot of people because you're in lockdown. And um, you know, I read a fantastic article last night about the value of our own health, and I think we're really uh, that's been exemplified by what's happening around us. But health is really wealth, and I think we don't ever um, should never um, take our health for granted. So that's the, the tip, the thought for today. Your health is your wealth. If you have good health, enjoy it. Keep safe and happy, safe farming, everyone.